someone say second fleet? We don't do the whole fleet thing in Kimura, Cotton. Shut up, I say this is the second fleet. Well, it's not official then. Not to me. That is not what official means. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, Monster Hunter Rise is on PC today. And guess what? Whether you have avoided all information about Monster Hunter Rise until it landed on PC, or you have played through the entire Switch version, I have some tips and reminders to enhance your experience through your journey playing the game on PC. Without further ado, my 10 10 tips for PC players of Monster Hunter Rise, with no spoilers, of course. Number one, visual filters. This one is just straight up completely new and wasn't a thing at all on console before. So, you know, you can mess with these. Personally, I'd really enjoy the one that just ups the saturation a massive amount, but they are all an interesting alternate way to look at the game while you are playing it. It may not affect your actual gameplay though, unless you are just, you know, filled with adrenaline by the concept of different colored backgrounds, in which case this may actually be your secret sauce weapon right here. Number two. Zenny problems. Rise is a bit tough on you when it comes to Zenny, especially if you want to play more than one weapon. It can cost a lot to build these and upgrade them consistently. Always remember, early on, any monster parts that you aren't using can be sold to make ends meet on equipment you will actually use. And even more conveniently than that, if you talk to your courier friend over here and ask him about his downloadable content, he will tell you about a number of things of use to you. The main one at this specific moment being an item pack for a PC players that happens to include a pile of golden eggs worth 20,000 zenny apiece. So with this small loan, you could probably start a successful hunting business. And then 30 years from now, who knows where you'll be? Number three, Guild Knight Armor which is also conveniently located at your courier. This is, well, this is the overpowered set for Rise. This is the armor that exists purely to let you power into the harder section of the game without stopping to upgrade. This is an armor set that was not part of the base game and is now in the game to let you catch up. That, that is specifically the point of it. This one is more of a tip for people who have played through the game before though, as it would sort of suck to skip the main progression path of the main game on your first go through, but it is still there if you want to use it no matter how much experience you have. Number four, DLC shmi shmel shmi. The one big benefit of PC at this moment is that you don't have to wait for any of the post-release updates to the game. Every monster that was added after the release, every event quest, everything is part of PC at the very beginning of its existence. You do not have to stop at the end of the base game and wait to do more. You can just sort of smoothly go on forward into it, and if you really just want to get sucked in and go straight from Izuchi to Redacted, then you can do it in one, granted very long, but still one session of gameplay. Number five, slow down. Yes, all of the game is already here, so you have more content than the Switch did at launch, but don't rush through it just because it's there. And more importantly than that, just be careful not to burn yourself out too early on this game. Rise has a very limited end game, and it is entirely powered by your pure love of hunting monsters for the sake of hunting monsters. So your enjoyment of this game will last as long as you feel that enjoyment, and going at the game too hard too fast just might leave you feeling a bit empty before the release of the expansion Sunbreak. Think about it. Sunbreak releases in the summer, which is a minimum of five months and a maximum of just under eight months. Your time playing Monster Hunter Rise could easily last that long, as long as you don't burn yourself out too early, like Icarus, who played a lot of video games or something, I don't know, something to do with the sun. Number six. Special License Quests. These ones are a time saver, but more so a convenience for anyone playing the game solo. If you are doing a playthrough of the Village Story, you'll find that it ends at the end of Low Rank, and if you want to then do High Rank, you have to go to the hub, where you are set back to Hunter Rank 1 and have to work your way all the way back up again. Or are you? Well, if you completely finish the village storyline, you will unlock a couple of quests known as special license tests, which exist to just power you straight up a few ranks in the gathering hub, essentially letting you prove what you have learned in village to catch up your hub a bit. These quests are definitely a bit more advanced than anything that you'll fight in Village beforehand, so come ready for a fight. But this is how you save yourself time going from Village to the hub and avoid having to kill a second round of low-rank raptors. No offense to the raptors. Okay, some offense to the raptors. <laughs>
Number seven, gather everything. Honey is the big thing here, as you will always want more honey, but in general, you should try to gather anything that you see when you pass by it in Monster Hunter Rise. Mining ore nodes and gathering from bone piles has never been easier or faster than it is in this game, and these are all materials that will help you loads both in the earlier stages of the game, and it will reinforce the habit for when you progress to bigger and better bone piles and ore nodes later in the game, allowing you to make even greater equipment then. It's all a big cycle of growth and whether you are new to the series or have just been in the end game of a monster hunter game for a while, this is your friendly reminder that you want to get every single material you can get your grubby mitts on, okay? And don't forget to use the farm either. And by farm in this case, I mean boat because the boat is submarines from the Argosi, but this is normally known as a farm. It's, this is how you make more things, make honey, have honey. You need honey, okay? You want to heal, honey. Number eight. Buddy management. On the note of gathering things, you can acquire yourself a gathering type palico to assist in this concept of maximizing your materials from everything that you do. However, this is far from the only benefit of using the buddy system well. Solo, you can have two buddies with you, both cats, both dogs, or one of each. If you want pure efficiency and effectiveness, then you sort of want to be surrounded by felines. If you want speed and comfort of movement, safety for weapon sharpening and those types of shenanigans, you want a dog with you. Either way, both the Palicos and Palamutes have a variety of possible skills, and they can actually greatly assist you in hunting, especially the abilities that they unlock at later levels. Do not ignore your little sidekicks. Upgrade their armor and their weapons. Treat them like part of your little hunting family. Number nine. Upgrade equipment. On the same note, upgrade your own equipment. Early armor spheres are a dime a dozen in the late game, so do not be afraid to use your resources early. Armor spheres are not something that you will regret using early on. Make your journey just that little bit more comfortable if you feel the need. On top of this, do not be stubborn and wind up stuck on something for three hours unless you have exhausted every method of upgrading yourself. Farm a new armor set. Are, are you getting poisoned to death repeatedly? Get yourself as much poison resistance as you can fit in. Monster Hunter is a game about preparation, and you can counter most of the most annoying parts of monsters in the series. Offensive skills are cool and all, but the best offensive skill is the one that lets you stay in the fight longer, attacking more, spending less time running away, and less time healing. Don't be embarrassed to farm out a whole armor set in the middle of your grind, and don't be too hard-headed to mess around with the utility skills either. They are actually really fun in Rise. I mean, check out Evangelion Fate extenders changes, if you want to see what I mean, it is absolutely nuts in this game. And finally, number 10. Choose your own difficulty. One of the most unique parts about Monster Hunter Rise is how variable your preparation for a hunt can be. I don't even just mean outside of the quest like Monster Hunter normally has, but within the quest itself. There is no quest in the game that is too hard to complete without gathering a single spirit bird. However, the spirit birds still exist. They are still there. Leading up to the initial release of Monster Hunter Rise, there were a number of people who were worried that spirit birds would feel like a forced mechanic where you had to run around the map for 10 minutes before every hunt, but that is absolutely not the case because the game is for the most part just not hard enough to push you to do that. That said, if you are ever struggling before even worrying about changing armor sets or anything like that, try just gathering your maximum amount of every spirit bird on the map before you're fighting. It increases your defense a fair chunk, your health a fair chunk, your stamina and your attack as well. Every one of those stats is something that will lead to an easier hunt for you. Spirit birds are not a forced mechanic to allow you to survive a hunt, but they are a very, very valuable tool if you ever want just a little bit more power without having to do any material farming. All right, everyone, I've been Gotten Dinosaur, and these have been my 10 tips for PC players coming into Monster Hunter Rise, whether ye be completely fresh or a console veteran. I hope you have a lovely time with the game, and may your hunting be ever happy. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye